pou 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 Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tiff. Today we're going to be doing Dinmen versus no Dinmen. To Dinmen or not to Dinmen? That is the question. This is the second video that I've done on this because first video, the outcome just wasn't where it's at and I don't know what happened. I'm going to put snippets along the way. So I'm actually going to redo this using the same products, the same method, and hopefully it'll come out much better than last time. But yeah, wow. Like, she's purdy. She is purdy. <laughs> she, you know, she needs a little help. <laughs> okay, so we're also doing kind of a wash now style later. I washed my hair last night because I went to the gym. It'd been about four, maybe five days since I washed my hair. I really needed to clarify. It was getting itchy. Hello. So with the wash now style later, I've seen a couple of videos recently and I wasn't really going to do this method because it's just washing your hair at night and styling in the morning. A lot of people do that. <laughs> so I didn't really think it was that much of a big deal, but the videos I watched, people were getting really great results from it. So I was like, you know what? Might as well throw it in this video and you can get to see if the wash now style later method is good for people who use a dimming brush and people who don't use a brush at all. And that's what this side is going to be. It's going to be the non-brush side. I'm not even going to run a comb through it or anything like that. I did detangle before I wet my hair in the shower. So these are the same products that I'm using as last time. This gel right here is the Mixed Chicks Gel. After I wet plopped, I went in with more gel, Aussie Instant Freeze, to help give me extra holds. Okay, this is Trelux Reflex Serum. With everything I do, I'm going to just do praying hands. Also, I put in leave-in conditioner last night after I showered and I let my hair air dry and I just quickly re-wet my hair in the shower just now. So I'm not going to apply more leave-in conditioner just because I have very fine hair that is weighed down easily. I'm going to hope <laughs> that the leave-in conditioner I put in last night is, you know, still slightly there. So it'll, it will um, help with slip whenever I use the Denman brush. You can hear it. That's an okay amount for me. You can make it more wet if you want. It's looking a little bit stringy right now. And I think a few videos I watched when people were doing wash now style later, before they dried their hair, it was looking a little stringy too. So maybe this is what it looks like. And it'll all come together in the end. I don't know. So next is AG Recoil. I'm almost out of the sky. My heart loves protein. Might be a little bit too much just for one side of my head. I always go in extra heavy handed. It's my biggest issue. Okay, still looking like a stringy mess. <laughs> but we're gonna trust the process. This is what it is. Okay, now I'm taking the Mixed Chicks Styling Gel. This is a pretty lightweight gel that's very runny. It's looking much stringier than last time. Last time, this side really clumped together beautifully. And I think that's what my hair naturally can look like versus the Denman brush, which is able to really make my hair curl a lot more. So it's just preference on what you want. Okay, yeah, my hair is able to brush through very easily. Nice. And I'm gonna do the same Denman thing that I did last time. It looks a little bit silly, but it gives me really nice volume. And I know some people do vertical lines with their Denman and brush it that way. For me personally, I feel like my hair just looks better whenever I do horizontal lines for this. Maybe because my hair is more wavy, so it wants to create like those horizontal waves versus a curl. Whenever I go at a horizontal direction from my face versus a vertical direction, I feel like that helps with my waves. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I'm not a hairstylist. I am like rotating it every whenever I'm going up to help give it that tension. Yeah, it has nice slip. Good. I was worried about that. Cause you know, if you've ever used the Demon brush without leave-in or when your hair is just damp, it can pull really bad. So you want good slip. Uh oh, when you're using the Demon brush. 
Okay, down here, I don't really care about volume too much. So I'm just gonna do what I normally do with a Dimmon or what I normally see a lot of wavies do with a Dimmon. So another thing that I usually do with the Dimmon after I brush my hair with it, it can leave it a little bit stringy, which could be a problem for wavies. So I'll just go in with water again to kind of reform those clumps and to take away the stringiness. All right, so this side, I'm just gonna do what I did. About a quarter size of the reflux serum. So when it comes to a dim and brush, Mains by Mel really put it into perspective of how you should think about using it. It's like when you're putting tension on a ribbon with scissors in order to create that spiral effect afterwards. So think of the Dinman as creating tension against your hair and it's pulling it and it's angled in such a way to that it will create waves or spirals. So it's just an enhancing product if that's what you want. It's not necessary. I used it whenever I first started wearing my hair in its more natural state. I was struggling with very um, frizzy hair. It wasn't uniform looking. I had um, just hair going in all different directions and the Dimmon really helped to give nice uniformity. So I guess the Dimmon's just fun to play around with. You can do, it's a very versatile brush. So I think if you are someone that struggles with creating uniform clumps and frizziness, just because your hair is new to this method and it doesn't really know what to do with itself yet, it's not really coming in a line naturally. That's why I think the Dimmon would be a nice thing to consider or just any brush in particular. The wet brush is really great as well. I hear a lot of people get great results from it. Okay, going in with gel. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to wet plop for about 10 minutes just because I want my products to absorb better in my hair before blow drying. Wet plopping is also great in order to help prevent frizz. So if you are someone that struggles with a lot of frizz, the Dimmon brush might be a great option to consider and also try wet plopping first. Maybe it'll help out. Going down. Okay, she is in. She is on. It is so hard to get all of your hair in the bonnet. So I'm going to wet plop for about 10, 15 minutes. Just clean up here a little bit and then I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so I'm back. It's actually been about 20 minutes. I watched something on YouTube. I got carried away and I forgot what time it was. So now I'm back. I'm going to take my hair out of the wet plop and then I'm going to get to dry plopping. I think maybe 20 minutes is a little bit too long to wet plop. You don't really want your hair to stay wet for too long. I also hear you don't want your scalp to stay wet for too long. It could lead to fungal issues. I also don't want to plop for 20 minutes just because all of my hair is sitting on top of my head and that could lead to the products getting on my scalp and irritating my scalp. I'm going to plop a little bit more. Then I'm going to take Aussie Instant Free and I will emulsify it with some water in my hand and then I will add a little bit more gel to my hair in order to give it some extra hold. Then I will diffuse my hair on low heat, low speed and then I'll get back to you guys with the final results to scrunch up a crunch. <laughs> okay, fast forward. <laughs> So whenever I'm applying gel as the last step, the reason you want to emulsify it in your hands first is so that the gel doesn't stick to your damp hair. That could lead to unnecessary frizz. So if you are scrunching and you feel that your hair is sticking to your hands, that means that you need to add a little bit more water. Some products are better at emulsifying than others. If I think the rule is if it has water as one of the top ingredients or the first ingredient, then it can emulsify very easily when mixed with water.
Okay, I'm ready to diffuse. I will be right back, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. I think it's dry. Yeah, let's, let's scrunch out the crunch. <laughs> Cause I'm an over scruncher. I touch my hair way too much. <laughs> it's a habit, I can't help it, but I'm trying to not overdo it. I overdo it with product. I overdo it with scrunching. This guy is just a lone ranger. He has no loyalty to any side, does what he wants. Like, excuse you, I don't even know where you belong. So I think this guy belongs to this guy and they just got lost in transit. The one thing that's on my mind is that on the Denman side, the ends are really stringy and they're not really coming together in any sort of clump. Whereas mid shaft on my hair, it's clumping a little bit. So I must have done something with this side specifically. I'm thinking in terms of the products maybe, because even whenever I normally style with my Denman brush, I don't have this kind of outcome. However, when it comes to the no Denman side, I am really surprised at how well it turned out. The cl it clumped together so well today and I noticed that whenever I was styling my hair. I'm really excited to say I had no frizzing issues on the no dim inside. It's a little juicy. She's, she's a little juicy. She's, yeah, she's a little juicy today. I like it, I like it. <laughs> okay, so my hair does feel a little bit product heavy, which is my fault. I must have gone in on a heavy hand, but I will say that this time around, the outcome is completely different from last time, which tells me it's not the product combination, just must have done something wrong. I'm a little bit greasy, or that I was styling on a little bit of greasy hair. Again, that could be the products, but it also could be because I did the wash now style later. Maybe I'm just getting a little bit greasy. I don't know. Overall, this time around doing Denman versus no Denman gave me much more uniform results as opposed to last time in the side that had no Denman brush. I actually preferred that side the first time I did this. So I did actually think that was really pretty. And with this side, I think it's very pretty as well. It's not stringy like I thought it would be. Ultimately, both of these experiments sum up to being Wavy hair is just that unpredictable. <laughs> it does what it wants. Even if you go in with the same technique, the same product, the same application, it can still turn out to be a different wash day than what you were predicting. I do think now that since I've been doing or wearing my hair like this for nine-ish months that I don't need the Denman as much as I did whenever I was first starting this wavy journey. And the Denman brush is a nice brush to have if you're willing to spend the money on it, but that isn't to say that you need this brush. It's really up to you and your preference and your hair type and what you want that final outcome to be. As for the wash now style later, I think it's a cool technique if you're a busy person on the go and you don't have time to wash your hair and style all at once. I think it's also great if you have some form of disability and you can't devote that much time to it because too much scrunching or moving your hands constantly or being upside down might be too painful for you. So I think wash now style later would be a nice option for someone with those particular needs. But yeah, if you like this video, please hit that like button down below. Please subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day wherever you are in this beautiful world and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye.